In the name of God, amen. It was an alarm on the sixth floor, apparently. No danger, all is well. <laughs> I just want to commend Gina Campbell for reading through that. <laughs> and for the acolytes for their composure. So, those of us who have the responsibility um, of making Christmas happen at, in church as much as in your homes, we know well the distinction between the work that we do and the coming of Christmas in the sense of that experience that can wash over you uh, to remind you why we do all that we do and why we would gather uh, late on Christmas Eve night. Uh, but you never know when that experience is going to come, and so you wait for it. A friend of mine uh, told me once that he was in a real funk at Christmas. He was a colleague, and uh, Christmas funk is a real hazard of the profession, as you might imagine. And uh, there he was, just going along, and the day before Christmas, he was working at home, slogging through what he thought would be his sermon, and, um, and one of the neighbor boys came to his house. It was the youngest son of an immigrant family, and it was clear that he wanted to share something in his um, increasing confident English. So he comes knocking on the door, and my friend opens the door, and the little boy says, Trick or treat! <laughs> and that was when Christmas came for my friend. Knocked him out of his funk, and from that moment on, all was well. It came for me in a different way this year. Uh, perhaps not surprising to you, uh, a more sober, a, a more sober way, given all that is happening and that we are holding in our hearts for our world. Um, it was last Saturday, and uh, we were gathered here, about 200, uh, 200 or so of us, um, here, while a slightly smaller group was gathered at the Lutheran Christmas Church in Bethlehem, Palestine and aided by technology that allowed us to see and hear one another, together we celebrated the birth of Christ. And throughout the United States and Europe, thousands joined us via the internet. And the senior pastor of the church in Bethlehem, a man by the name of Pastor Mitri Rehab, welcomed us with the ancient biblical greeting, Salam. In the words of the Christmas carol, a little town of Bethlehem, he said, are true today like in old times. In thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For during this Christmas season, he said, while the Palestinian community was celebrating the lighting of the Christmas tree in Manger Square, young Palestinians who were demonstrating their longing for freedom were shot at by re-invading soldiers of the Israeli occupation. So two contradictory phenomena so poignantly met in Bethlehem. As we continue to live, he said, between tear gas and Christmas ornaments, between shattered hope and resilient faith. Still, he said, living with both hopes and fears, we reaffirm our faith in the child of Bethlehem who came, that we might have life and have it abundantly. The service lasted about an hour, and the connection between us um, often felt tenuous. There was there was a time lag and an echo 
as we took turns reciting the scriptures and the prayers. We couldn't see each other very well. It was a bit blurry on the screen, and occasionally there would be that loud screeching sound of audio feedback. And at one point, we lost contact completely, and, and when it was restored, we weren't sure whose turn it was to speak. But it was in that connection between us that I felt Christmas come to me in that same juxtaposition of tear gas and Christmas ornaments. And you know, it hurt, but I didn't mind the pain because there was something about our connection so true to the spirit and the meaning of Christmas. There was nowhere else I wanted to be but connected to them in that place where the light and love of Christ are so sorely needed. And it dawned on me in that simulcast that how we celebrate Christmas, how any of us celebrate Christmas, and indeed how we live our lives, depends in large measure on how and to whom we are connected. So as we're here again, tonight in this beautiful cathedral. I can't help but think of the connections, the thousands of connections, yours and mine, some strong, some tenuous, to the places in this world where the light and love of Christ are most needed. Surely there's such a place where Christ is most needed inside you, and it may be known to you alone. We all have such places, I know I do, places where we're less than whole, less than what we want others to see when we're in their presence, places where we're wounded, with, that house the parts of us that we're not proud of or would give anything to change. And in that connection, God takes residence inside us, right in that place, with loving kindness. Brene Brown writes that love is the last thing in the world that we need to ration, and we don't need to ration it tonight. Practicing compassion for anyone, including ourselves, simply increases the amount of compassion there is in the world. So remember that, that connection, and how pleased God is to dwell in that place for you. And from there, inside, we might consider our next connection, however strong or tenuous, to places of great need among our family and our friends. Not one of us lives inside a Norman Rockwell painting or a Friends episode. We live with real people. And the connections between real people are always less than perfect, perhaps no more so than at Christmas. And there will always be places of vulnerability there. And in that connection, Christ comes, not with a need to fix, but simply to be and to love. And then we move out beyond ourselves and our immediate circle of family and friends. Think now of the ways you and I are connected to the people of our communities and this country and the world. Some of those connections are readily apparent given who you are, who I am, and the particularities of our lives. But others require choice, an active engagement, a willingness to connect and reach out for another's sake. And sometimes those connections are thrust upon us unaware. 
As we celebrate the birth of a holy child, I, I'm reminded of the power of a child who died just last September. You remember? You remember his photograph, a little boy washed ashore, memorialized in a photograph that traveled across the globe. Do you remember? And do you remember how we responded, all of us across the world, in that moment with such sadness and compassion and resolve to help those fleeing their war-ravaged land? That is the power of connection. How we celebrate Christmas, how we live our lives, depends on how and to whom we are connected. And those connections are our gift. As Christians, they are our greatest responsibility. We're not the light of Christ, but we testify to that light. And we can only testify in the places where we stand. Bishop Johann proclaimed from Bethlehem that Christ, that God's answer to a broken world was to send the light of Christ. Therefore, he said, think of him now preaching from Palestine. He said, we will not teach revenge or despair. We will not resort to extremism. We will not teach xenophobia toward other religions and people. We are witnesses to the light from Bethlehem. My friends, we, we are witnesses to that same light here in Washington and throughout our land. In our hope and fear, we affirm our faith in a child who came that we might have life and have it abundantly, and not just us, but all of God's children. Therefore, we will not make peace with racial inequality in our country. We will strive each day in faithfulness to that light and that connection for a better day for all of God's children. Nor will we accept, as testifiers to the light, we will not accept as inevitable human cost of our prosperity, a rising homeless population, stagnant wages for the working poor, and the ecological deterioration of our planet. We are better than that, we who testify to the light of Christ. And we will not allow our public discourse to be dominated unchecked by those who traffic in fear. We are better than that, we who testify to the light. And we will remember that Christ himself and his family were refugees seeking shelter in a foreign land. And in faithfulness to him, we will do all we can to welcome those fleeing violence in their lands. We hold our connections to one another and to this world as our greatest gifts. And so we must go as those who testify to the light of Christ where that light is most needed. We go inside and to those we love and to our world. For where else would a Christian go? What else could a Christian do? So, trick or treat. <laughs> Salam. Merry Christmas. The light shines in darkness, but the darkness does not overcome it because we are there in that connecting place, holding on 
and testifying to the light.